Hello, welcome to Holy Spirit 30, day 21. That's three full weeks. Uh, I'm so excited that God has helped us thus far and that you've exercised the discipline and, um, you know, um, put in the work to come in um, thus far. The, the feedback has been phenomenal. I'm excited that you're learning so much about the Holy Spirit and much more I'm excited that your fellowship with the Holy Spirit is deepening. Let me remind you, the Holy Spirit is a person. Is not an idea, is not a course to learn in school, is not um he's not a great philosophical entity. The Holy Spirit is a person that can be known and that can know us and that knows us. He wants to have fellowship with you, he wants to have a relationship with you, and if you will lean into the Holy Spirit and um, give attention to building your fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it will yield you the greatest dividends ever. I mean, I don't know how better to stress it that there's nothing you will do as a human person, not just as a believer, there's nothing you will do as a human person that will yield more results, more fruit, more returns than um, 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 investing in your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And my prayer is that your relationship with this dear Holy Spirit has become better, has become deeper. You're getting acquainted with him and you're knowing him more and more. Today, I want to take, take um, the, the thought that I started, I think yesterday or two days ago, um, about how that the Holy Spirit ultimate goal is to make of you a soul winner. That's what he wants to do. He wants to make of you a soul winner. That's really, really what he wants to do. Um, and not just a soul, one, a soul winner, a master soul winner. Remember in Genesis, the first chapter, the Holy Spirit was brooding over the face of the deep, the darkness there. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, God who called the light to shine out of darkness has shone forth in our hearts. And so that same Holy Spirit that brooded over the dark places, brooded upon our dark lives, and um, God called light to shine out. God himself shone forth in our hearts um, so that we might, um, you know, become partakers of the life that Jesus has brought us. But then you see that light is shining not just for us, but it's shining through us to every dark place in the earth, to every dark life, every dark person. The Holy Spirit has raised you up as a, um, a bearer of this light to the dark world. And I made a very, very profound statement, um, I believe it was yesterday, that if we succeed at everything and fail at being so winners, we may as well agree that we have failed at everything else. Jesus did not say, follow me and I will make you a blessed man. Jesus did not say, follow me and I will heal your bodies. Jesus did not say, follow me and I'll give you a good house. Jesus did not say, follow me and I'll give you a good family. I'll, I'll, I'll get you a spouse. Jesus did not say, follow me and I'll help you make heaven. He didn't even say that. What he said was, if you follow me, if you build a fellowship, a relationship with me, I will make you fishers of men. You see, the ultimate proof of discipleship is soul winning. The ultimate proof of a deepening fellowship with the Holy Spirit is soul winning. When you get to know a person, you get to share their burdens, you get to share their heart, you get to share their vision, you get to share their obsession. When you get to know a person, in fact, you see, you can know about a person, you can know, um, you can hear and be informed about a person, you can have some form of fellowship where you have acquaintance with a person, but to truly say you know a person means that not only do you know their thought processes, not only do you know their burdens and their heart, you as well share their burdens and their hearts. You share their thought processes. Let me put it this way. I don't know if you've ever found yourself um, saying something or acting in a certain way and you go, oh, it's my friend that behaves like this. It's my friend that says this. I found myself saying some things and I'm like, oh, it's this friend of mine that says this. It's my friend that acts this way. You know what happens? When you fellowship with people, there has to be a rub-off. There's usually a rub-off. There's a rub-off of nuances. There's a rub-off of character. There's a rub-off of thought processes and all the rest. And so as you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, there has to be that rub-off. And one of the ways we know there's a rub-off is that you begin to share in the burden of soul winning. Now, the Holy Spirit comes to empower us for witness. 
In Acts 1 verse 8, he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. And I remember I spoke about this in the previous day, but I want to just stress the point. A witness is someone who tells and who shows. Now remember, please don't forget, we had a teaching some days back where I explained that the Holy Spirit is a showing and a telling spirit. You remember that? Now, if the Holy Spirit is a showing and a telling spirit, when he comes into your life, he makes you a showing and a telling man. Now, what do I mean by a telling? And let's flip it the other way. A telling and a showing man. What do I mean by that? He empowers you to tell the message and he empowers you to show the message. Now, what do I mean by he empowers you to tell the message? People are not going to get saved because we simply spoke to them. There's a convicting power, a compelling power that must be in your words, all right? And then he empowers you as well to show the message. You see, because we can only tell people that Jesus is alive and we can't tell people that Jesus loves them alone. We have to show it through the works, the miraculous works that we do. So the Holy Spirit comes into your life to grant potency and power, authority to your words, and then he grants you the ability to validate whatever it is that you claim. So if we claim that the Jesus we serve is a healing Jesus, then we should be able to validate it. Every single one of us believers that have come into the faith, haven't received the Holy Spirit, we have resident on the inside of us what is called inherent power. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he says that you shall receive power. The Greek word there is dunamis, after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And I've got to just quickly help you understand how this works. It is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead that comes to reside on the inside of you to make you a witness. And so it is an abnormal, it's an aberration for a believer to live without being a proof producer. Your life ought to be a proof that Jesus is alive. It's an aberration to just live life on a continual basis. And you know, there's, there are no moments of, wow, look what the Lord has done. You see why? When the Holy Ghost comes to reside on the inside of you and, and he anoints you with power, and that word is dunamis. Now, dynamis is where you get the English word. The Greek word dynamis means inherent power um, and all the rest. Um, inherent there meaning that you, you don't need an external power source. Um, inherent means that the power that is required, whatever level of power is required can be generated from this. Now, it's where you get the word dynamo from. And some of you may be acquainted with this, what a dynamo is. A dynamo is that little, um, you know, gadget, electrical gadget that you attach to the spokes of your bicycle. And as you pedal the bicycle, the dynamo converts your mechanical energy to electrical energy and sends that energy to the lamps of the um, bicycle. That's just a very simplistic model. So it sends it to the lamps of the bicycle. So the bicycle does not need to attach. And so at night, um, you're riding and then you have that bicycle there. And, and if you don't have a battery or something like that, um, then it's dark. You can't see your way and all the rest. You know, because a bicycle is basically um, a mechanical device. It's not an electrical device. So you attach that thing. And what it does is that as you pedal faster, then you generate more electricity and then the light becomes brighter. You pedal slower, you generate less electricity and the light becomes um, less bright. And you stop and then the light goes off. And so um, um, the writer of the book of Acts, that's um, Luke, uses a definitive word for what the Holy Spirit becomes to us. The Holy Spirit is that dynamo in your spirit. Now, what is a dynamo? A dynamo in and of itself has the capacity to generate any level of energy that is required. However, it is dependent on the involvement and the engagement of the person who has the dynamo. So if I want more power, I have to pedal faster. If I want less power, I pedal slower. I can't celebrate the dynamo and expect power. I have to engage with the dynamo to release power. Now, um, I was in prayer one time and then the Holy Spirit explained it this way to me. He said, in the exact same way, um, the dynamo requires mechanical energy. The dynamo of the spirit 
of the Holy Spirit requires mechanical energy. And I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, speaking in tongues is to your spirit dynamo what pedaling is to your bicycle dynamo. The more we speak in other tongues and we pray in the spirit, the more energy we release, the more power we make available. You know, so people don't realize this. It was Brother Hagen who said it, and I felt like that was one of the most profound statements. He said, speaking in unknown tongues is the door to the supernatural. It is not the supernatural, but it's the access way, is the door to the supernatural. I find out that the more I pray in the spirit, more, the more conscious am I, I am about spiritual things. The more I pray in the spirit, the easier it is for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to find manifestation through me. The more I pray in the spirit, the easier it is for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be expressed through me. The more I pray in the spirit, the more power it is, it is that I can release for whatever needs to be done. All right. So if you want to see more power demonstrated in your life, and remember that the primary reason for power is witness. Okay. Now, so we can use power for just absolutely anything, but the primary reason for power is witness. The primary reason for power is witness. Now, so the more power I want to see in my life, the more I have to give attention to praying in the Holy Spirit. The longer I pray in the Spirit, the more conscious I am about spiritual things and the more supernatural power is made available through me. The less I pray in the Spirit, the more carnality you're going to have, the more conscious you're going to be about fleshy things and the less of spiritual power that will be demonstrated through you. So... The hack is very simple, pray in the Holy Spirit. And when you're praying in the Holy Spirit, I want you to keep at the back of your mind a picture of that um, gentleman, that young boy, pedaling his bicycle, and the more he pedals, the more light he has. You know, I always like to tell people, you see, um, maybe tomorrow I'm going to speak about this, about how that, or, or let me speak about it a little and then get into it fully tomorrow, about how that power in and of itself is power. Um, we have a dam in Nigeria called Kainji Dam. In Lagos, we have a couple of other electrical dams here and there, um, generating plants and all that generates power for our country and all of theirs and our state. But here's the thing. Power in and of itself is useless. There has to be a device to convert it to what is required. Okay, so if we have electricity flowing into a house and you don't have bulbs, yes, it is electrified. It is, there's power there, but there's no illumination. If you have electricity flowing into your house and you don't have heaters, you're going to have electricity, but you, you might have hypothermia and be so cold and die out of a cold, even though there's electricity there. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, you have to understand, please stay with me, that in the exact same way your human body has organs, your spirit man has organs, and that as we generate spiritual power, then your organs can translate it into what is required. So I'm praying in other tongues. I'm generating spiritual power. My spiritual eyes will translate it into sight, into light. All of a sudden, I am seeing clearer into the realm of the spirit. I am generating spiritual power. My spiritual ears will translate it into hearing, revelation. Somebody says, oh, pastor, how do you know that a spirit man has organs? I'll show you. I'll show you. Hebrews chapter 5. Let me show you this. Well, to start from Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says that, and God breathed into the nostrils of the man the breath of life. Now, that breath of life was not just the Holy Spirit. Because in Genesis chapter 1, it tells us, that's Genesis chapter 2. In chapter 1, it tells us that God has created the human spirit. And so when he breathed into his nostrils, it wasn't just the Holy Spirit. That breath of life was the human spirit breathed into the body that had been formed. And so I want you to look at it this way. Your clothes um, I'm wearing a shirt now. Now, the reason this shirt has arms is because my body has arms. Are you following what I'm saying? And so what I have to do is to slip into the shirt. What the human spirit did was to slip into the body. All right? Because the body is the cloth for the spirit. In the same way, that's what happens at death. The human spirit slips out because the human spirit is that breath of life that slips out of the body. And so... If your body has hands, your spirit has hands. If your body has eyes, your spirit has eyes. But let me show you further in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, Hebrews chapter five. 
and this will bless you. Hebrews chapter 5. And look at what it says here in the fifth chapter of Hebrews. It says in verse 14, But strong men belong to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So you see that they have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And the senses, they are not physical senses. They are spiritual senses, spiritual organs. Okay, so when I pray much in the spirit, power is made available that's translated to every need. If it's a need for light, if it's a need for um, fervency, spiritual fire, if it's a need for this, if it's a need for that. But you see, all of those things will be absent if there's no power. And that's the reason why we have to learn to pray much in other tongues. And here's today's big bold fact. The exact same power that raised Jesus from the dead resides in your human spirit. In essence, you don't have a lesser power. It's the same power. But the power that worketh in you or the power available to you is that which you've made available by praying much in the spirit. Welcome again to 30 Days of spiritual mastery, spiritual edification, spiritual growth, and transformation. Um, please make sure you like this video, you share the video, and um, please encourage others to watch the video. It will bless them. I'll be with you again same time tomorrow.